This is Tom Rudecky and today I'm going over the secrets about the sun, the equator, and all the big lies you've been told. This is something that nobody talks about in the news. It really impacts deficiency levels. We're 78% deficient and it's not getting better. In the last 25 years, it has not improved one bit because there's a big secret about the sun and whether it makes any vitamin D at all. And we're starting now. The thing with vitamin D is there is a great meta-analysis that came out this year that looks at 308 studies and it looked at 81 countries. It looked at 8 million people and checked all their blood level measurements. These are the facts. We don't have to go buy popular newspaper articles, Twitter feeds. We can go buy the specific numbers. And this is probably the best study that looked at all the studies. The reality is 77 plus percent of people have vitamin D deficiency. The further north we get, one and a half times or 170% increase in vitamin D deficiency. How did they measure that in the study? Essentially, they take a blood test and if it's less than 30 nanograms per deciliter, then you're deficient. If you're over 100 nanograms per deciliter, then you have vitamin D toxicity. You can get some side effects, some nausea, some vomiting, some chills. But if you're between 30, to 100, that's kind of the sweet spot that we're looking at of not being deficient. The active human form of vitamin D is vitamin D3. That's kind of the recommended one. Vitamin D2 is more of the plant form. Studies show now that vitamin D3 is the way to go. Now let's talk about blood levels. There are ways to measure blood levels and essentially 30 nanograms per milliliter is what you want. You can go a little bit higher. So over 100 nanograms per milliliter, you can test for that. But you can see here, I got the K2 plus D3 bottle. Some studies actually show that taking vitamin K2 takes some of that calcium out of your arteries and puts them into your bones so it can handle some higher levels. But the only real way to know for sure is to get your blood level test done. And the tricky thing is studies have shown that as we get more obese, so people who are much more obese have much higher deficiency levels. Another scary fact is after COVID, obesity rates went up and the people that are most vitamin D deficient are people with higher obesity rates. So if you're out of the ideal body mass index, your vitamin D is statistically lower. And the crazy part is there's so many associated negative factors with deficiency. People are getting outside less. People are getting less sun. And because of all these deficiencies, we have these symptoms of deficiency. Number one, bone pain. Vitamin D is critical for calcium in your bone strength. Do you have bone and joint pain? Muscle weakness, especially near the core. As you get further away from the equator and get less sun, much more muscle weakness, much more osteoporosis, fatigue less vitamin D, less sunlight, generally associated with higher levels of fatigue. Bone fractures, as you get more up north and as you get lower vitamin D levels, you're much more likely to have osteoporosis and fractures. Now the crazy thing about fractures are, if you have osteoporosis and you break a bone, there's a one in five chance you won't survive the year. I've had so many patients that just have a hard time going again. They just kind of go over a cliff as far as their muscle strength, their weakness, because they're not moving. Very sad to see. Bone deformities. People who have cases like rickets, which is a vitamin D deficiency, this leads to weak bones, weak growth, shorter height, something to consider. As you get further north away from the equator, this gets worse. Frequent illnesses. As you go up north, there's a flu season. As you get within 200 miles of the equator, there's really no known flu season. This is crazy to me. Nobody talks about this. This is proven. As you get further north, people have more immune issues. And not just that, autoimmune diseases. As you get further away from the equator, and go north, there's more autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis. Now, that's complicated. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. Something to think about, mood changes, higher depression. As you go north, further from the equator, as you go higher up, people get more depressed. Me, as a Michigan football fan, seeing the sign scandal, poor Jim Harbaugh getting suspended, I'm pretty depressed. Or his people in the South watching ESPN, they're happy, they're laughing. So clear North and South happiness discrepancy. I actually went to school in Ohio, so please don't destroy me in the comments. We can all get along and we can all be friends. I promise. Impaired wound healing. I deal with a lot of wound care. Diabetic ulcers, venous ulcers, pressure wounds. 
as you go further up north, people have a harder time healing wounds. Hair loss, not the biggest thing. I'm not too concerned about this. Probably too much hair. I gotta shave pretty much every day now. As you get less vitamin D, there is a relation. Probably not the strongest. Sleep disturbances. There's something in our brain called melatonin. At nighttime, our melatonin rises, and with UVB light, it decreases. It has to decrease so it can spring back up. People who don't go outside and don't get any sunlight, then essentially they kind of stay flat and have a hard time sleeping, insomnia. I go over that in my melatonin video below. Cognitive impairment. I go over a video how essentially over the age of 40, our brain shrinks 5% per decade. It's shrinking every decade. And as you get over 70, it decreases even more. You want to be getting their proper supplements. We go over magnesium 3 and 8, vitamin D, all the things you can do to prevent that. Check that out below. In blood pressure, less vitamin D associated with more blood pressure. In my, one of my previous videos, I got attacked by a flat earther who was upset at me for propagating the equator theory. So here we go. This is for that guy. Just to sum it up, as you get further away from the equator, more flu season, more immune conditions, more osteoporosis, more fractures, more depression. That's pretty conclusive to me. There's two ways to get vitamin D. You can get it from the sun, which is what we're gonna focus on, or you can get pills, supplements, the best foods. I go over that in my best way to get vitamin D. I also talk about toxicity there a little bit more. Check out that video if you want food and supplements, but we're talking about sunlight here and the big scam of sunlight. You also want to consider vitamin K2, magnesium, omega-3 fatty acids. All of these are pretty deficient. We're talking like 60 plus percent deficiencies out of all of these. And you also want to check out my melatonin video. This has a lot to do with sunlight. A fun fact is as you go further up north, Inuits in Canada, Canada, they get a lot of their vitamin D by eating salmon. Salmon has about 1,500 international units of vitamin D per serving. That's how they maintain their levels. Societies evolve and adapt to their living conditions. These northern climates require supplementation. And just look at animals. In the winter, with no vitamin D, everybody hibernates. In the summer, when vitamin D is plentiful, everybody activates and turns on. We have high metabolism, high energy, everything just starts to work. It's kind of like our on-off switch. Wouldn't you rather want to be on? Wouldn't you rather have energy all the time? You can ingest vitamin D2 or D3, but we're focusing on sunlight here. So specifically UVB rays in the wavelength of 280 to 320 convert 7-dihydrocholesterol in a non-enzymatic. So an enzyme is not used. It's very unique. It's a thermal degradation that turns 7-dihydrocholesterol into vitamin D3. Crazy. Ultraviolet blue light activates inactive vitamin D to active vitamin D. There's enzymes that involve magnesium, so it's important to get your magnesium, and that vitamin D is then created and act. It is actually possible to use a sun lamp. Now there's a lot of brands out there, and I looked this up. The studies aren't very conclusive. That means nobody really paid to do the studies, how much you need for how long, but they recommend, you know, five minutes, three to four times a week. That's all you need to convert your skin to your level, to your kidneys, and get your vitamin D. So that basically means your 7-dihydrocholesterol level can be converted by 5 minutes with this lamp to pre-vitamin D3 to get your normal levels. Now, there's no real studies verifying this, so tell me what you think. They are about 600 or more dollars, so they're not the cheapest thing in the world. You want to get your sunlight, or you can eat the activated vitamin D as well. What's important is the time of the day. When the sun goes from east to west, you know, because I'm on a camera, I don't know which way I'm going here. You want to get it from about 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. during the day. Around noon, that's when you're going to get the highest levels of vitamin D. It's also important to consider your skin skin color. Those with darker skin, that means more melanin, more pigment, you're going to absorb less UVB light. People like myself, I was born in Poland, I can only last five minutes before I get a sunburn. I'm going to make a lot more vitamin D with the sunlight that's presented to me. The amount of skin exposure, if just your face in the winter is exposed, you're not going to get much UVB light. If you're in your underwear or naked sun tanning, you're probably going to get a lot more UVB light. You're going to make more vitamin D. In dermatology, there's something called the Fitzpatrick scale. This starts with number one through six. One has the least melanin. That means the least sunlight will make the most vitamin D3. Whereas number six is very resistant to burning, but creates the least amount of vitamin D3 per time. 
sunscreen. If you cover your whole body with sunscreen, this blocks UVB light. That's the whole point of sunscreen. If you get too much UVB light, you're gonna burn your skin, you could damage yourself. Studies show as you damage your skin, your body almost shuts off the vitamin D production. You just wanna get a safe amount of vitamin D and you wanna make it. You don't wanna be burning yourself and making unlimited amounts. You don't wanna consider the sun angle. And here's kind of the big scam and misunderstanding. During the winter, the angle of the sun is lower. In the summer, it's directly above us or a lot closer. In the winter, it's at a very low angle. I had a friend who lived in Edmonton, Canada, and he told me during the day, the sun came up and barely cleared his bushes and disappeared again. Now that I think about it, he was actually pretty depressed, so it makes sense. There's less UVB light that makes it down to the ground level, and as a result, we make less vitamin D. It's important to consider the distance from the equator. The closer you are to the equator, the more vertical the sun is from you. When you get further away from the equator, the lower the sun is from you, and it's much harder to get UVB light, much harder to make vitamin D. I looked at some studies, and pretty much all the studies, because this is something that's really hard to figure out. In 2016, a study looked at the winter months in Boston. They found that essentially, even if you go in your underwear from November to the end of February in Boston, it's virtually impossible to make vitamin D. The angle of the UVB light rays are just not at the proper angle. You cannot make it. Human skin exposed to sunlight on cloudless days and that's 42.2 degrees north, which is Boston. November through February produced no pre-vitamin D3. Now, when you go up to Canada, it's even worse. So Edmonton, Canada, in the north, the tricky part is from about November to about March, the sun is south. So you're not getting a lot of rays, especially in North America, in Europe, in Russia, northern China. And this is why I mentioned a lot of these illnesses like autoimmune illnesses, osteoporosis, the vitamin D deficiency symptoms, they're seen in a lot greater quantities in these areas above 35 degrees north and below 35 degrees south. But below 35 degrees south, there's not a whole lot of population in the world. Edmonton, Canada, that's 52 degrees north. Essentially from the beginning of October to the end of March, impossible to create vitamin D. When you go down south, 35 degrees north and 18 degrees north, they studied, even in the middle of winter, you can make vitamin D. Even though it's a lot better in these warm tropical areas, it's still deficient for the vast majority of people. For example, in India, the deficiency rate's like 35 to 40% still. You're still very deficient, unfortunately, because we're all staying at home, we're not going outside, we're wearing more clothes, we're wearing sunscreen. What's the danger of getting sunlight? Prolonged and excessive sun therapy can cause premature skin aging, increased risk of skin cancer. It's said you wanna limit to maybe 30 minutes at a time. You wanna avoid tanning beds. The crazy thing is, as you go further north, away from the equator, skin cancer rates increase. Now, this is probably because on average, people have less melanin. That's true. They're just not used to the sun. It's more harsh when they're exposed to it. There are a lot of studies too. So for example, there's Dr. Ken Berry. In his book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, he kind of goes over how it's very financially lucrative to call more things skin cancer because insurance covers it. You can do more procedures. You can do more biopsies. A lot of professions like dermatology, those billing codes are where you make much more money. It's more beneficial to call anything that, that's suspicious of cancer to just call it cancer. That's kind of what he says. I'm not getting Getting into that. I love my dermatology colleagues. They do an unbelievable job. I do some biopsies myself, but it kind of makes sense. It's kind of like, hey, the procedure is covered for the patient versus the procedure is not covered. If you call it cancer, we're asking you to call it cancer then it's more likely to happen for the average doctor. I'm not saying I would do that. Majority of doctors I work with, highly ethical people, but you get into the interest street. You get into corporate medicine. Most medical clinics now are controlled by corporations. Hospitals are controlled by corporations. All it takes is one person to flip a switch to classify these things differently. And you've kind of already seen that in big corporate industries. Now the toxicity is 100 nanograms per deciliter. If you're outside all day, the studies show outside in one hour, we can make about 100 international units per hour. Nobody's really gonna say that for certain. That's kind of the rough thought. It gets very complicated. If I'm outside for say eight hours, does that mean I'm gonna make 8,000 international units? Probably not, our body kind of shuts it off once it has enough of its need. The reality is people in warm areas don't really have a lot of toxicity. 
And I go over this in my other videos, but toxicity, I looked at all the studies, there's hardly any real reports of toxicity. Even people taking like a million units per day, the second they stop taking it, they kind of go back to normal. They get some nausea, some vomiting, some chills, but once they stop, they get better. The real trick is you want to get some testing and monitoring. You can do a blood test and essentially if you're under 30 nanograms per deciliter, then you're deficient. You want to be between 30 and 100 units. If you go to your doctor, you can get these tests approved or you can pay cash to get that done as well. I give some links below. Studies do show that sunlight does eventually taper off. So if you stay in the sun forever, you're not just going to make unlimited vitamin D, but at the same time, it's not going to cause toxicity. So anything under 30 nanograms per deciliter will make you deficient. And 78% of people around the world are estimated to be deficient. Hardly any people show toxicity according to the studies. It's possible. So I don't recommend going crazy and just taking unlimited vitamin D3. But the reality is the toxicity rates are overblown. I go into that in depth in my other videos. Check on that below. If you're deficient, the easiest thing to do is to get some supplements. I link some of my favorites below. I go over it in videos below. I'm going to skip it for the sake of this video. Otherwise, it's going to be like an hour long and people will attack me in the comments. So here's the big secret. There is the winter scam. If you're in the 40 degree latitude range or higher, which is most of Europe, most of Northern United States, then you're not making any vitamin D in the winter. You need to get it through diet or through supplementation, or you can move to Florida. Personally, I like going to Florida. That's my dream. I love the state. It's beautiful. It's like a paradise. All health problems seem to melt away when I go down there. The truth is 78% of people around the world are deficient. When you go up north, it's not everybody, but it's 1.7 times higher higher or 170% higher. People aren't getting enough sunlight. They're not getting enough supplements. They're not getting enough in their diet and it's leading to all these conditions. And as we get more obese, our vitamin D drops even more, more hip fractures, more osteoporosis, more immune issues, more depression, more autoimmune diseases shooting up like a rocket. Check out my videos on magnesium, vitamin K2, omega-3 fatty acids, and the single most important thing in order. Here's my top five things in order. Number one, you have to strength train. Number two, you have to get cardio. Number three, you have to sleep properly. Number four is diet. Number five is supplements in order. Check out my 30 day course with coach Ryan, how to transform your health.